Good morning and welcome to um, morning prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today, uh, we are um, honoring and remembering um, a saint named Elizabeth Florence Hapgood. She was um, a US writer and a translator of Russian texts. She was born in 1851 in Boston to a um, long established New England family and she died in 1928. She studied uh, Germanic and Slavic languages. She specialized in Orthodox liturgical texts and um, choral singing, Orthodox choral, choral singing. Um, she also um, translated um, French. And in fact, she was, one, she was the one who introduced the American um, public to Victor Hugo, Hunchback of Notre Dame and, and such. Um, she was also a friend of Tolstoy in Russia and visited him uh, frequently. And in fact, she, she um, visited Russia, Russia uh, many, many times during her life. She was also a, um, a journalist, a foreign correspondent and, and editorialist for um, publications such as the New York Evening Post and The Nation. Um, on one of her trips to, well, she had gotten to know a man named Tikhon, um, who was um, Bishop of um, Alaska, Archbishop of Alaska and the Aleutian Islands, and she visited him there. Um, but when he became Patriarch of Moscow, um, she happened to be visiting him when the Russian Revolution broke out. And so she was one of the very first people who reported on the execution of Tsar Nicholas and his family. Um, she is um, known as one of the major figures in the dialogue between Western Christianity and Orthodoxy. She wrote extensively, um, much of which is still available to us. Well, with that, let us begin. As usual, starting on page 78 and quickly moving to page 80. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Turning to page 82, let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalm. This morning we will read Psalm 89, found on page 713, full verse responsibly. <clears throat> Your love, O oh Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth shall, will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. 
The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and to your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible to all those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? Almighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea and still the surging of its waves. You have crushed Rahab of the deep with a deadly wound. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens, the earth also is yours. You laid the foundations of the world and all that is in it. You have made the north and the south. Tabor and Hermans rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and truth go before your face. Happy are the people who know the festival shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly, the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's first lesson is taken from the first book of Samuel. When the Philistines captured the Ark of God, they carried it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then the Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon and set it up beside Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod rose early, the next day, behold, Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him back in his place. But when they rose early on the next morning, behold, Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both his hands were lying cut off upon the threshold. Only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. This is why the priests of Dagon and all who enter the house of Dagon do not tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod, Ashdod to this day. The hand of the Lord was heavy upon the people of Ashdod, and he terrified and afflicted them with tumors, both Ashdod and its territory. And when the men of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, the ark of the, of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is heavy upon us and upon Dagon, our God. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, let the ark of the God of Israel be brought round to Gath. So they brought the ark of the God of Israel there. But after they had brought it around, the hand of the Lord was against the city, causing a very great panic. And he afflicted the men of the city, both young and old, so that tumors broke out upon them. So they sent the Ark of God to Ekron. But when the Ark mm. of God came to Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out, they have brought around to us the Ark of the God of Israel to slay us and our people. They sent therefore and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, send away the Ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place that it may not slay us and our people. For there was a deathly panic throughout the whole city. The hand of God was very heavy there. The men who died did not the men who did not die were stricken with tumors, and the city of, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. We will say together, Canticle nine, found on page eighty six the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing 
from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. Now many signs and wonders were done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high honor. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and pallets, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall upon some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up and, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and taught. Now the high priest came and those who were with him and called together the council and all the senate of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison and they returned and reported, we found the prison securely locked and the sentries standing at the doors. But when we opened it, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were much perplexed about them, wondering what this could come to. And someone came and told them, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. We will say together canticle 19, found on page 94, the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our third lesson is from the Gospel according to Luke. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a snare. For it will come upon all who dwell upon the face of the whole earth. But watch at all times praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 96, let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Keep peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Teach your divided church, O God, so to follow the example of your servant, Isabel Florence Hapgood, that we might look upon one another with a holy envy, to honor whatever is good and right in our separate traditions, and to continually seek the unity that you desire for all your people. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who prayed that his church might be one. Amen. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, sorry. O oh God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may when night comes rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we pray for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Trishi Tanjore within the United Church of South India, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the Congregation of St. Peter's by the Sea in Cape Nettick, for the Trustees, Standing Committee, Diocesan Council, and other bodies of the Diocese of Maine, and for our own parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Tom, Barbara, and Olivia. We offer continued prayers for Zara, Bruce, Brian, Tracy, Sarah, Ross, Jenny, Rosemary, Marlene, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound men members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erling, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples in places of violence or oppression and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We pray for refugees, immigrants, and those who are displaced, especially for children, for all who suffer for conscience's sake, for our enemies and for those who wish us harm, 
for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis, that countries beset by any calamity, whether natural or man-made, may not be forced to compete for the attention of more fortunate nations, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. We offer this prayer for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace in the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. We pray for our own nation, for all who live with the daily threats and effects of gun violence, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error. For all who suffer from injustice, for eyes to see injustice, and for the will to work for fairness for all of God's people, and for all who struggle to change our world in its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Rick, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish. Pray for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Catherine, Nancy, and Tim. We pray for the departed, for victims of the war in Ukraine and the fighting in Sudan, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. This brings us to the end of our uh, service this morning. As always, we're happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us and hope you'll be with us again soon. This is the last week of June. It seems hard to believe, but as we um, begin to notice 
hopefully not too soon, the uh, diminishment of light, let us find our light in uh, the presence of God in our lives and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. In the meantime, may God bless us all this day. See you soon.